problem with carrying this around is the fuel. I don't want to carry fuel inside the van, so I'm trying to work on a rotopack system that will mount to the uh, Prime Design ladder. <laughs> All right, sometimes I like to take a generator with me just, uh, it depends on the trip, but sometimes they can be used to charge up the batteries. This is a small Win 2000 watt generator. It'll normally run about 16 to 1700 watts steady state and it'll peak up to 2000 watts. So it's perfect for what we need when we need it. It's a small generator. It's quiet. It's, uh, I don't know if it's exactly as quiet as a Honda, but it's pretty darn quiet. And it's, you know, a third of the price and uh, the problem with carrying this around is uh, the fuel so i don't want to carry fuel inside the van so i'm trying to work on a rotopack system that will mount to the uh, prime design ladder on the outside and that's going to bring its own challenges but uh, let's take a look at that so that generator has a small fuel tank on it so i'm thinking about mounting a rotopacks up here on the uh prime design ladder I know it's going to get in the way and interfere with the side of the van if I choose to open the door um, all the way open but typically what I found is I hardly ever open those doors all the way open and uh, if I need to it's going to be a roto pack so it's easy to undo and take the uh, fuel can off the problem is as I, most of the uh, mounts are for round ladders made out of round tube this prime design ladder is not round tube at all it's uh, it's kind of rounded on one edge and then square on the other. It's not exactly easy to find any pre-made uh, bushings here to help mount the, the rotopack system on. So you can get a set of bushings that look like this, um, two of them here, and they're cut out for round ladders, you can see. And you mount these at the cross point where a rung meets the, where a rung meets the long part of the ladder. So, uh, I've done some manipulation on this one to actually help this bushing fit my specific ladder. And, uh, but you can tell that these are made for, for round because this is the way it came before I started chopping at it. But, uh, and it has this uh, metal backing plate here and then the rest of it is the front Rotopax um, mountain adapter that is uh, metal as well. I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, first I'll show you how this kind of works and uh, why we need to do a little bit of modification on it. All right, you can see what I'm talking about here. I kind of got this mocked up. You can see how the, uh, the cutouts in the bushing there are made to fit across the rung and the vertical support there. And so I haven't uh, done work on this one yet, but you can see that's what kind of keeps it kind of locked in there at that rung and keeps your ladder pristine, doesn't gouge into it. But definitely have to make some modifications to fit this particular ladder. So um, I'm gonna show you what I've been doing. I've, I've, I've completed the one on the back already. I just need to do the adapter on the front. The rest of this, there's a metal plate, is the Rotopax mount, and uh, the bolts will actually go through that instead of this. But uh, just pretend like there's a Rotopax mount here with the locking system and uh, you can just insert the uh, I think I got a small tank it's a two gallon fuel tank and uh, it'll lock right on here and uh, sit here on the ladder and that will solve the problem of keeping fuel inside when I need it when I don't need it I'll take it down but uh, let's go take these uh, these uh, bushings here which are made out of HDP so it's plastic here I purchased these but looking back at it I would have probably just purchased a bulk HDP block. I could have actually drilled the block out first before I cut it in half and that would have made some perfect holes here without having you know, I don't have any milling tools or anything but I'll show you what I did that uh, will get you close enough if you want to do this on your uh, prime design ladder. All right this stuff makes a mess so wherever you're working at you're gonna get a bunch of uh, plastic shavings all over the place. This is the vice I've been working in you can see here that I've got black shavings all over the place but uh, I tell you what works best here's what I found. Um, if you have one of these types of hacksaws, a small form-fitting hacksaw works okay if you've got a good sharp blade. This folding uh, sawzall works pretty good. That'll give you a good straight cut. But the star of the show has been this uh, multi-tool here that uh, is used to cut up under the doors for flooring and things like that. I use that to shave off. And what I found, the trick is, is you want to watch the speed. So you got to 
Turn the speed down enough so you don't melt the plastic, but you're kind of cutting through it. And what I found is somewhere around between three and four on this Ryobi here gives me a good clean cut without melting the plastic. I tried it with a Dremel. Dremel did okay, but Dremels, I don't know, the blades strip out pretty easy on those. So I found this will give you a good, uh, a good cut and get you a good even surface as well because of the way the, uh, how flat this is, you can get a good flat cut on it. So I've just been marking these and starting off putting in a line with uh, this saw here on both sides and then coming in and making my undercut with this. So I've already kind of worked on this one just a little bit, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the depth right on it. You can see how bad that one is. This is before I discovered using the multi-tool. And you can see the difference here with this one where I've used the multi-tool. The goal is to get these two the same thickness here or the same depth so this will sit on the ladder rung and then I need to mill out the uh, the part for the rung or the ladder vertical and then uh, mill out the part for the rung here so let's get to work. This one's gonna fit on the back. This one's gonna fit on the front here. So you can't can't turn that now. It's locked on good. So that'll uh, once we get the bolts in there and the metal plates on both sides and then the rotor packs on the this um, this will give me confidence that it's not gonna slide up and down a ladder and it's not gonna tear the ladder up. So I'm just gonna clean up the edges with a file and uh, we'll mount the rotor packs. All right. Let's see how this all fits together and get this rotor pack mounted. So I've got my locking mount, the base plate, some bolts, and also <coughs> keys for the lock. So this is our mount that we, and these bolts are definitely too long, so I'm gonna have to cut those off, but Right on top here. Let me remove all of these. All of this is stainless hardware. I don't know if the <coughs> the Rotopax hardware is stainless. It doesn't look like it's stainless. Remove all these nuts and washers. All right, so we got that. So this is our top plate here, and this is what has the inventions for the car carriage bolts here. So you can see this top plate has the uh, square cutouts in it. So this is gonna go on just like this. And then these carriage bolts will fit nicely in there. So we gotta mount this here using these bolts that were provided. So now we can give this a mount, see how long our screws are. I'm just gonna put one through for right now. 
give us some room to play around. So we're gonna go like that. So we wanna mount this thing like that. We can get a bolt from here. Get them all lined up. here pretty sturdy all right so that's what we currently look like so we're definitely gonna have to trim some of those uh, bolts down probably a good I'd say a half inch probably but uh, that's currently what it looks like on the ladder. Again, this is the prime design ladder. See it there? If you're curious about how it interacts with the side door, we're about to find out. Definitely don't want to open that door 180 degrees with it on for sure. But I knew that. So bring you over here where you can see. Still hits, but not far. It's good enough for me. I don't ever open this door that wide, anyhow. I just marked some of those bolts down, so I'm gonna cut those off and I'll get back to you. Just cut these bolts down, and uh, I already did two of those. I'm using this little small vise here, and I'm putting the carriage part, the square part, up in the vise from the bottom. That'll keep the bolt from flying out and then I'll just tighten the nut down on top of it a little bit there. That keeps it from going catty-cornered on me while I'm uh, using the grinder. Alrighty, I've got some of the bolts cut down. And keep in mind if you're doing this modification, you probably may have to get longer bolts. And then, depending on what's available, you may have to cut them down a little bit. But uh, Everything is up and mounted. I'm going to try to tighten these up equally. Good and tight, as the Germans say, good and tight. There we go. That's really tight. The one somewhere else. And yeah. That's Rotopax on a prime design ladder. Custom design. All right, this is a fun little project. This is how to mount a Rotopax fuel can on a prime design ladder. And because of this uh, odd shape of this prime design ladder uh, versus the round ladders that you see that uh, these uh, uh, mounts are built for, we had to do some milling using just basic hand tools. So hopefully some of this information helped you out. Maybe there's some pre-made brackets that I don't know about that I'm not aware of with prime design, but this is just one way to do it. Again, I don't recommend doing this if you need to be able to open your door fully all the way to the side of the van. 
because this fuel can will get in the way and if this hits the side of your van you're probably going to hate life It'll put a nice dent in it and probably take the paint off too so we're going to end this video here hope you enjoyed the content if you did give me a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to the channel already please do so that would greatly help out the channel until the next time skill up and ride van up and go and bathe everybody needs a plan b that's it that's it cha cha for now